You know, uh, some, some of the guys mentioned and they said, you know, uh, there's a big hunger for things, you know, especially, you know, they said in Colombia. But I want to tell you that there is a hunger everywhere. It's just the church has very little to offer to those people. Therefore, no need for them to come. The, Jesus said the harvest is plentiful. The problem is with the workers. It's few of them. I want to tell you if there was 50 people like Prophet Ibn Joshua, there still would be not enough. There would have been 150 people like him. There still would not be enough. We could, we could have probably done 10 day crusade, 20 day crusade and it still will be packed all the way to the fullest. And there still will be enough to give to people. The problem is the time and the problem is that the workers, the people that actually do the work are few. And so um, as I'm going to share a few things, I, I want to encourage you guys that God is calling each one of us to do, to be a worker. It might not be on a crusade like this, but each one of us, especially in our church, our vision is that each one of us has a job to do. Each one of us is important. We are a team. You need me, I need you. You need us, we need you. Every part is very important. Every person can play a difference. Every person can help somebody. God has placed us on this earth for a reason. Not for only our selfish gain. Not so that we can, all, we can be established. But so we can help to, be to help establish somebody else. We all have needs. We all have problems. But we were placed on this earth. And this is one of the things that Prophet Ibn Joshua emphasized on workers meetings. God placed us on this earth so that we solve somebody else's problem. And when we're going to be busy solving somebody else's problem, God will get busy solving our problem. Amen. Amen? Uh, first, I just kind of want to share a little bit. Our team, uh, our, our team has worked really, really, really hard there. We've put in 16, 17 hours work days. And trust me, I, me and Leo were talking. I mean, we worked on construction and we know how to work hard. You know, when you come home and you're like so tired that... You don't know on which side to sleep but let me tell you this was beyond that tired okay i don't know what we did there but after that we we, we left uh, we woke up about 5 36 for girls probably earlier <laughs> uh, we were 9 8 30 we were on the bus to the crusade to the to the place meeting from very early morning we were busy through you know the blazing hot sun we probably didn't eat probably we ate only once a day about 4 p.m 5 p.m when service started and uh and we worked hard a few small breaks water breaks some people got so exhausted and got a, like a heat stroke that they were throwing up like because of lack of food and all this stuff and so those of you that have been to scone okay you guys seen the workers sleeping standing right those of you that have been there and you're like how can you sleep standing trust me it's possible <laughs> okay andre <laughs> has a picture of me i'm by the wall like like this and andre's like you know trust me it's possible okay after after you pu put in three four days three days in a row of, of grueling work okay it's possible to sleep standing so anyways but our team worked really hard our girls worked really really hard you know from hauling boxes to to uh you know to to screen people to sitting people down to all, all kinds of things our guys worked really really hard with cameras i mean uh you guys think our wires are big here well uh, this is about a hundred foot wire now take that 200 yards wire okay and that's twice the thickness so uh you know and that's eight hours of the service and you have to carry these things so our guys got smart they took three other two other people divided the wire and they kept it nice and clean and so um it was it was a very 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 um good experience for us because we know that where god is taking us these crusades we will do our own our own crusades our own, ourselves you know it's it's gonna take us some time to get there it's gonna take for us to mature in faith it's gonna take us to uh for us to grow first it starts maybe at camps where we see healing first it starts at those services that we visit maybe first it's a neck healing maybe a back healing it's maybe i had a bad knee healing next thing is gonna move into uh more serious healings the next thing is gonna move into cancer hiv aids when we're gonna see it next time the next step is gonna go 
our faith is going to strengthen our faith is going to grow next time we're going to next step will be where we're going to see people rise up for wheelchairs and then crutches and things like that next we're going to move where we're going to just come out on the stage when we will pray like prophet tb joshua prays and wise men pray and other ministers like pastor vladimir manchan and demons begin to manifest and people get set free and so this is part of the things that we had to do it's like a war zone it's incredible at the same time very tiring you know, imagine 45,000 people in the stadium and there's probably maybe 50 of us especially the first night all the other ushers there was probably maybe a thousand ushers or so um, they had no idea what was about to happen and we knew that <laughs> and so there's 50 of us for Scone, even Wiseman we running around the whole stadium trying to get people from all the way top to the bottom we carrying people by the end of the time of the mass prayer, we were so tired carrying people, we were dragging them, okay? I mean, we just, we just had no strength to carry people already. That's just, that's how tiring it was. It was like me and Wiseman here, you're dragging this one girl, just dragging <laughs> through the thing. We're like, you know, you're going to have to ask for healing later. Right now you're getting deliverance. And so we, we, were, we were very blessed. We were, um, we were in charge of, uh, our, our most, half of our team, most of our team was in charge of, letting sick people in and they all had different color bracelets where we set them wheelchairs one way sick people the other way uh, you know a different sickness the other way and the desperation is just is just incredible you know we don't see those people because uh they stay in home they stay in intensive home cares and because the church has no solution for them that's why they don't come out to church and the places like this when it happens or in Nigeria, Lagos, Nigeria, those people come out and they receive healing and deliverance. And um, it was literally, there was probably about 1,200 police officers on site. If it wouldn't be for the police officers controlling the crowd, our team would have just easily got ran over and they would stomp us down and probably would have funeral. Okay. Or we'd have to be raised from the dead. The desperation is just incredible. And people from 8 in the morning lined up all around the stadium. Hot blazing sun. And people are sick. They're already weak. So there's a bunch of, I don't know if you've seen in the, in the pictures, there's like tons of ambulance staying. People carrying on, the, on, on, on those flat beds, carrying the people inside because people get hydrated. People are weak already as it is. And so it was a very incredible sight. I mean, your heart, we've seen diseases and dis disabilities and disorders that you probably haven't even imagined. I mean, I think we've seen everything under the sun from disabilities, from, from, from mental or of disorders, from physical disabilities. I mean, some things that you see, you're like, how in the world is this person still alive? And, and people live like that for the, rest of the, for the rest of their life. And they came out and, and many, many of them received healing. We probably, this, probably was about maybe four or 5,000 people on the wheelchairs. Uh, maybe, maybe not that much. Maybe about two and a half, three thousand. 3,000. And probably good, especially last night, probably good 400 people got up from the wheelchairs. I mean, people all over the place. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. People, the second night police had to sleep outside they couldn't go home they had to sleep outside of the stadium so that people don't break in the stadium uh, on the second night people kept coming that uh, mayor had to shut down the main highways and main, main entries into the cities because buses kept coming well, that's that's already outside of the people 10,000 people or so that were already outside I mean more people were coming because it was streaming live in one of their one of their main channels people were just desperate coming just to see the move of God one of the incredible things that uh, that I thought was was tremendous is on the first night when they ask anybody here that's that's never been to church or never been to a Christian event please stand up on your feet but 45 percent 40 percent of the stadium got up on their feet that's the people that first time ever been exposed to the gospel and to the power of God let's put our hands together and so that's that's um that, that's just that's an incredible thing I mean there's nothing there's no bigger miracle than salvation of soul you can be disabled in your body you can be sick but still be the friend of God you can go through hard things in your life but still be a candidate of heaven so our physical disabilities and sicknesses they don't limit us or they don't define who we are in Jesus even though Jesus came to heal and deliver us even from those things but the greatest thing is that our name is written written in the Lamb's book of life amen let's put our hands together for that for Jesus um, 
So I'm going to go into just sharing a few testimonies. And if you heard, you already heard some of them, but I'm just going to maybe give a few more details on those testimonies and then kind of share a couple other things. <clears throat> Number uh, first test uh, first testimony was actually the first miracle that took place. It was a man with leg ulcers, and those of you that watch Emmanuel TV, it's pretty common. Uh, especially in, uh, leg ulcer is a tropical cancer that begins to eat up at outside your outside skin, and your skin begins to rot and fall off, and so and then and then the smell from those things is like a rotten flesh. If you ever smelled rotten flesh, that's how it smells when those people are around. You can't have them in closed rooms because the stench is just unbearable. They have to be in open places, and they got literally had uh, just bottom of his leg completely eaten out you could see the flesh you can see the muscles you could see the pus and everything and so it was just gross and disgusting he couldn't put any weight because of the pain of that leg I mean you can imagine open wound okay and so as soon as he receives prayer prophet touched him he told him to walk he gets up and starts walking like there is no tomorrow so uh no it's not not like there's no tomorrow but like it's like not, there's nothing <laughs> okay sometimes you get carried away thinking ahead and you don't know what you're saying uh, but he started walking and so the healing already started so the pain was gone the root of the problem was exposed now the body has immune system will heal itself when the root is gone when the curse is gone that was number that was the first miracle that took place and we moved and that was like the really big highlight everybody really got excited number uh number two testimony i want to share is a very unique testimony uh it was a and you guys heard it heard it mentioned a little bit but it's going to give a little bit more details a 10 year old boy was in prayer line he said like no emotions nothing his mom was just crying and she's begging prophet to pray for him he needs to be delivered i was like okay that's kind of strange 10 year old boy i mean prophet usually doesn't pray for kids like that for unless there are specific cases so he begins to ask questions why do you think he needs deliverance so his mom begins to explain he said at four months he started speaking fluently like this just started speaking fluently like he knew the language for 10 years he started speaking so it freaked her out i mean come on at four months nobody starts speaking fluently at four months nobody even says mama okay or daddy okay and so he started speaking fluently so she started you know it's something abnormal at two years old he began to read people's minds he come, would come to people and start telling people what they're thinking what they're what, things like that so that that definitely like freaked her out completely and then when he began when prophet tb joshua stretched his hand start praying the god the boys start crawling and uh, prophet tb joshua by the spirit of god said there's a there's a spirit of tiger in him and he delivered him and that boy like he was completely motionless like he didn't even almost didn't know what was happening and then after that he just broke down crying and started thank you Jesus I'm delivered I'm free I feel like something left my body and so let's put our hands together for Jesus you already heard this uh, testimony many times already but there's that seven-year-old girl that was wearing body brace from from her waist down because her knees couldn't support herself her bones couldn't support herself so she from from birth she couldn't walk the only thing is you had those little boots attached to those little metal braces that kept her knee kept her legs straight and so she just would wobble along like that that's the only means of uh getting around that she could as a little girl you can imagine uh the pain that mother and, and 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 parents would feel watching your little girl grow up not be able to walk not be able to go outside and play with the kids not be able to enjoy life such unfortunate thing that happened not even her fault from the beginning of life but i'm glad that we have a jesus they, there's nothing impossible amen and so she got healed she got healed and ran in front of her eyes she started running around like he would never even tell that she had any problem with her uh with her uh, with herself and uh she, her mom took her to many hospitals to many doctors doctors said sorry there's just nothing we can do the surgeries we're gonna do we're gonna do a surgery it's just it's gonna go back to the same state very shortly that's a temporary and you know what's the point of doing surgeries it's just damaging your body if it's not gonna bring it uh, a permanent solution so they just decided this is the way she's gonna be for the rest of her life but i'm glad jesus is good amen, amen. and so um uh testimony that, that uh, Andre mentioned that one that one was we I think we all got caught off guard because I got yelled too for for staying at, you know we as workers we had to pay attention because these move so quickly so we could not uh we couldn't really really so uh, soak in all the testimonies and miracles because we were running with cameras we were running doing different things so we couldn't even kind of almost catch the details but I got caught off guard on this one so I'll share the details uh this man he had actually a uh, a work um 
injury something happened in his work and he something fell on his head so he had multiple surgeries and his head you can see there was indent on his head from one year to another it was open uh, obviously through the surgery and he had brain damage so he forgot he stopped speaking because of the brain damage and he was not able to walk because his nerve system was uh, damaged so he he didn't have control of his body and if not mistaken I, I don't remember that detail, but he also had a hard time controlling his uh, bowel, bowel system, like going to the bathroom and things like that. I don't remember that specific detail, but I think, I've, I, think I recall it that's also as well. And so, anyways, Prophet comes up to him and, you know, he started praying for people on the wheelchairs. Huh? No, no, it's something that worked. I think it's damaged something. And so, it was, we were like, oh, was like, oh my, this is, a, this is a serious one. I mean, this is... Uh, th this is a, a challenge. We were like, okay, what's going to happen? We're all standing and watching. Prophet be comes and lays his hand uh, on him, prays for him, then picks him up, says, walk. He starts walking like, like there's nothing. Like he just, he's been walking for him. And then he starts speaking. He starts, starts saying in Spanish, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And then he starts speaking more words and more words and more words. By the time he got to us where we were sitting him down and writing some papers for him, uh, he was completely answering all of our questions you know what's your name where you live what's your phone number what's your email all these things he was his son was with him in case he needed but his son wasn't assisting him at all and it was just a I, it was mind-blowing it was mind-blowing that Jesus there's nothing yeah, come on let's put our hands together um, and then of course uh, of course the the, uh, the the manifestations the the deliverances that was taking place it was just it was just incredible you saw there was uh, on the video there was just multitudes of people laying around there's so many people that we were not able to get from the stands because it was so high up and we were just tired uh i'll show you a very funny story on the first day so you have to understand that most of those people had no idea 95 percent of people never seen a ministry of prophet tb Joster. so they don't know what mass prayer is they don't know what prayer lines is they they prophet tb Joshua even had to cancel a prayer line in the beginning because people were just smooshing him in and he couldn't he couldn't move around freely so on the first day we start a mass prayer and this is hilarious okay so there's a bunch of police there's a bunch of other ushers and people start manifesting we're trying to carry as much as people as possible but there's too many of them we can't we can't handle them and the other ushers are standing they don't know what to do they start casting out demons that was hilarious too but uh you know they can't they don't know how to do it and stuff but but uh so this one woman she was so violent she just I mean she was throwing big guys I mean she wasn't that big uh, and she was just throwing these big guys around like little you know like there's nothing and so she was approaching the, the police officer he was so freaked out he took out his uh, thing what do you call it huh the, the, the thing that police officers beat people with night sticks or whatever they call them and he was about to beat that woman with a stick and I, we're running we're running with this woman it's just probably about like 100 feet away we're running with this woman we're like oh uh oh we dropped this woman we run to the officer no 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 she's okay she's okay and so we grab that woman we take it to the front and uh <laughs> i'm telling you that was that that the first night that that made my that made my knife i was laughing so hard i couldn't even carry the woman and so um uh it's just they they just deny they didn't even know what was happening they were they were looking around and like whoa what's happening and so it was it was mind-blowing too <clears throat> and you know um <clears throat> something that i want to i do want to share so I'm, I'm done with the testimonies part but something i do want to share that prophet tb joshua shared um on multiple meetings uh specifically when he was talking to the ministers and he was talking to the to the workers and i think that I also will encourage you and encourage our church and as you know, Prophet T.B. Joshua, you'll know this one thing about him. He is a man of giving. He is a man of charitable works. You know, our Bible says that they will know us by our love. Not by our preaching, not by, by, but by our love, by our giving. And so Prophet T.B. Joshua, um, in multiple occasions, you have to understand that the, the places, uh, the meetings that we, he was there with, there were people that, yeah, people are very rich they were very, very rich people as pastors big sponsors so people had big gifts for him I mean people had a lot of things to offer to him but he did not take one gift he said I will not take it but what I want you to do is I want you to take this gift and find a person that is in need and give it to him and tell him that that's from me and so 
You have to understand that people, when they buy a gift for a prophet, they don't buy, they don't go to the store and buy a fifty-dollar gift card or, or, or uh, you know, or you know, something, something of that sort. I mean, these gifts are in thousands or ten thousands of dollars, and some probably in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. He refused every single gift that was given to him. Said. I want you to go and find a person in a hospital, find a person in, uh, who's in need, find an orphan, find a widow, find the one that needs to go to college and has no money, pay for him, find somebody who's in the hospital, doesn't have money to pay for the bills, you pay for them. He said, this way you show the, the Christ love to them. And so, I, you know, and uh, he began to share his testimony of how he began his ministry. He said that when I needed money for college and I would work so, and you know, some of you know the he, Prophet Joshua grew up very, very poor. He had to, at early age, he had to go work so he can go to school to get money for school. He said, when I saw a person that had no money to go to school, I would give him my money that I had to take for school, for my school. I would pay for his schooling. And he lived this life from the very early age. And he said, I've learned that anointing of God and the blessing of God is tied to your giving is tied to your charitable works and he said not to the place where you can get back he said to the place where you where you consciously make up your mind i'm gonna give to the place that i know i will never get it back from them i know that they will never ever repay me back for it because they don't have it he also reminded us at the workers meeting he said that you're praying for breakthrough you're praying for blessing you want to go to the next level in life but remember there are people that are praying to be in the place where you're at so number one always be grateful where you're at in life because know that people are praying to be in your place and number two help people that are not that have not reached the place where you're at to reach that place he said when you help other people they're not there where you're at reach that place where you're at God will make sure that he will find somebody that will help you to go to the next level that you're believing for let's put our hands together for God you know none of the thing is that people in prayer lines those people that got healed people that got delivered they try to offer uh they, they try to offer gifts to him this one lady particular in pastor's conference she got uh she had a breathing tank and she was in a wheelchair so she couldn't start running around like she'd been exercising for years and she she brought an envelope said i you know i'm a i'm a widow and i'm a retired person and i've been saving a thousand i've saved a thousand dollars for holy i've been saving for whole year save a thousand dollars so i can give it to you this is my thanksgiving offering and he refused and he said i'm not going to receive this gift right now because god's grace cannot be exchanged for money and we always have to keep that in mind especially those of us that minister that god's grace can never be received the money he said when you go home when your emotions settle down, you can then make a decision to be a partner of the ministry. But right now, what God has given you is free and I can't charge you for it. And so, I mean, to, to me, it's just another level of respect of the man of God and his ministry and how much he does. And you guys know how much, how much he does. All the money, you know, uh, the, the amount of money that he receives in the ministry is uh, probably beyond that what we can ever dream of or, or, or have but all the money that come in all that money comes out he could afford to have houses all over the world private jets all over the world he can afford little he can afford it easily with the money that he gets but he lives in a humble house he doesn't even have his own car people drive him around and they don't drive him around in mercedes and escalates they drive him around in a uh, minivan that's probably about five thousand dollars worth okay and and he lives a humble life there's a reason why there's such a great anointing in his life that man loves God with all his heart and man loves people with all his heart loves God with money with his time with his efforts and loves people with money time and effort you know how much time he spends just giving it to people I want our church to be this kind of a church I want each of each one of us on individual level that we keep always in mind who we can bless who can we help who can we maybe say a good word to get a job who can we recommend uh you know to this position who can we maybe uh, i don't know find a person in your life find people always pray before uh me and my wife we before uh, before we go to work we pray together and this one thing we always pray together god help us to help somebody today 
regardless if it's going to be maybe with money if it's going to be time maybe it's going to be just with words of encouragement or hope or faith but help us to be those people that we everywhere we go we love people we love with our money we love with our time we love with our emotions amen church are you ready to do that amen. come on I promise you I promise you one thing is that when we take care of God's projects that's what prophet Joshua calls it the poor the sick the widows the orphans the those that that those that uh, don't have families those that, that don't have anybody to speak on our behalf when we do that when we take care of that God will take care of us the Bible says let your bread on water so in the due time when you need it it'll come back to you let's live a lifestyle of giving you know uh, what what comes to church you know your tithes and offerings they come into the house of God by according to the scriptures according to the Bible so your tithes but I encourage us to go beyond that so what I'm talking about charitable gifts is beyond what we bring to church what we give to church is that we always have a spare change in our pocket we always have something that we can bless somebody pay for somebody take somebody out to lunch pay somebody's coffee and just do a great thing amen church And um, the last thing I just want to I want to share and when I conclude with that what prophet T.B. Joshua taught us through uh, through uh, through his uh, through his messages throughout uh, throughout the whole conference he had he had one theme uh, this theme was especially for the ministers of God this theme was to get into the Word of God he said it's the Word of God in us that produces the character of Christ He encouraged us and I want to encourage you as a church that if we meditate on the Word of God the Word of God is power and if that Word of God gets inside of us to the very being of us to that subconscious level of us we will operate and work in that power prophet T.B. Joshua shared the secret uh, on the crusade to the ministers and then he prayed for impartation and people begin our uh, ministers begin to pray for the uh, for the sick on the wheelchairs and demon possessed and people begin to get delivered people get, begin to uh, uh, be healed and all that stuff and he shared a secret in his life what brings about the spirit the anointing that breaks the yokes and heal the sick and brings breakthrough and he said that's get into the, into the word of God getting deeper into the word of God what he said he called he, he said uh, reading the word of God and turning it meaning kind of like let me put it in the other words chewing on it you read something and you you meditate it you chew on it you turn it around from this angle this angle. you begin to meditate you begin to say it you begin to repeat it you begin to let it let it uh, let it come deep in your heart deep into your subconscious so you live it you breathe it you speak it you think it this is who you are this is part of you and he says when that happens then the Spirit of God begins to move in your life and back up the word that he himself wrote you have to understand as we're reading as we're reading also uh, with our home groups the uh, the book good morning Holy Spirit and uh, Benny he shares a secret as well the secret he shared in the secret to his life is when Holy Spirit touched him he dove into the Word of God he started meditating on the word of God. He started reading. He said, uh, you know, he, he, he stopped caring about the things that teenagers do, playing soccer, playing football, doing all the things. He said, I just go into the word of God and I start reading it. I start meditating. I started asking Holy Spirit, explain to me what does this means. Holy Spirit, show me what she means. Holy Spirit, you are my guide. Guide me to, to, through the very word that you've written. And, and, and uh, Benny Hinn describes and you guys reading that book that Holy Spirit began to open up begin to bring revelations and revelation brings Christ to the scene meditation brings revelation and revelation brings Christ to the scene Amen. and so that's what the prophet T.B. Joshua right after the message he spoke calmly and you guys those of you that listen to him you know how he speaks he spoke very calmly he is a very soft-spoken person he he finished his message and he said right now I'm gonna demonstrate what I just preached so that not, my words not only gonna be mere words but they're gonna be back, backed up by power and Paul says in the scripture he said that I want to come to you and, and and you know speak things in colorful words and say tell to you all these great things but I want my words to be with power 
that there is going to be when I say that God heals it I go and lay my hands and God and God and, and God performs the miracle but that comes church when we make the word of God a standard for our life that means everything in our life is measured to the word of God nothing lower nothing higher word of God takes priority over all things more than anything church I the, the what I've received what I've been encouraged and what I've been um challenged by is that we can walk in the anointing of God we can see what he sees and he encouraged pastors he encouraged ministers and I was greatly encouraged He's, he he gave the secrets to the anointing of God operating in your life it's the word of God it's spending time with the Holy Spirit deep devotion and charitable giving those three things it's like a three-folded cord they like that like the Bible says they cannot be easily broken when we do those things especially our leaders those of us those of us that are going to be leaders those, uh, uh, leaders that we have here look the word of God must become a part of who we are that means the word of God that means we have to spend time meditating on the word of God that means we have to spend time thinking on it chewing on it turning it like prophet T.B. Joshua says you know looking it from the different angles different and that's memorizing it making a part of who we are the word of God is power and if we take that word and put it deep in our hearts that power will operate in our lives hallelujah church are you receiving something this morning let me read just a couple more things to you God's word is power when his word becomes the living part of us then we possess power Christ and his word are one meditation on God's word brings Christ to the scene the word dominating you is Lord Christ in you if the it's the word of God that builds Christ's nature in us Med reward for the relationship with God is power so I encourage us church it's not that there is no sick it's not that there is no that are oppressed it's not that there is no people that have a great need but I promise you if once the Spirit of God will fall on our church the anointing of God fall on our church the doors will have to, people will have to be standing at the doors at 3 4 in the morning guarding the door so nobody breaks in in the church to save their seat this auditorium will be nothing and no auditorium in Tri cities will be will, will fit the demand that there are for the healing deliverance for breakthrough and just for the spiritual uplift you don't know what it does to a soul when they see God alive when they see God it's not somewhere who knows uh, I believe in him he's in heaven I don't know if he even cares for him, what I'm going through I don't know if he even I to be honest I don't even know if he can do anything besides I have this fuzzy feeling that I believe in him he's there but no when people see that God is real God answers prayers today God heals today God delivers today God heals the broken heart today then this faith arises in then you can go like apostles go be crucified upside down if you need to because you know why because you know for who you're doing it because you know where you're going because you're confident that God is in heaven I'm going there and you can do and you can be and you can have anything that God says you can have when you know that God is alive. We're going to pray. Yeah. And we're going to ask God. One prayer point that God, uh, that Prophet T.B. Joshua prayed in pastor's meeting. We're going to ask God that he's going to give us a hearing heart for his word. We're going to ask God that we can not just read his word, but we can hear his word in 